<laughs> because there's so many things here that can kill you. And it's constantly in a state of stress, you know, and you, and you want to do something to numb out so you don't feel the pain. So I'm, I'm kind of starting to enjoy some of those things that you obviously have been taking gratitude for a long, long time. I love till he's old. Uh, I like Foster's what? Lager. 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 I like Foster's lager. That's a rock. Uh, and uh, we're actually going up to Cannes, I think, in a couple of days. And uh, I, t I was told that you really have to be careful about going in the water here. I How can you have so many creatures here? <laughs> you know, I guess it's because you don't have any tornadoes or hurricanes or all that kind of stuff. And everybody says, it's so safe here. You know, you're so fortunate to live in Australia. But it's like, you have to watch where you step, you know? Those little red spiders can get you. Do those things, like, seek you out? <laughs> or you can avoid them, right? Oh, good. Anyway, uh, I did take a shower today, and uh, I'm clean. Uh, put my other deodorant on, I don't smell bad. I, I really did a lot for you folks. <laughs> uh, I want to thank, who, who's the gentleman that put together the opening trailer there? That, uh, did all the CGI and all that special effects. He'll be here a little bit later. Oh, he's not here now? Uh, Give me his name one more time. H. Gibbons? That's the one. Yeah, please give him a big round of applause. You know, it's, it's getting amazing these days because you can almost, with all the new technology, you can make your own movies, you know, you can do just about anything you want. And it's just amazing how many talented, gifted people are out there, probably through the course of the weekend, spiced into some of the talks I do. I teach and lecture all over the country, uh, not to go off on a tangent, but I. I teach people how to go after their dreams, and I speak at universities, colleges, uh, I teach acting, I teach uh, movies from fear to self-mastery, and basically help all those people with so many talents and gifts, whether they want to be a writer or create a new company or a new product, I teach them how to go out there and do it. And the only reason I can do that is because it took me half my life, okay? For me, to kind of get beyond my fear, my walls, my blocks, all the things that stop us and go out there and do the things that I want to do. And uh, one of those things was bringing back Battlestar. And I don't know how many of you know or are aware of what's going on with Battlestar, but there's a tremendous amount of uh, resurgence with Battlestar. And we're working very dil diligently right now to bring back the show. In fact, <coughs> I went out and spent a great deal of my own money uh, to produce a trailer, which you have not seen because it's in post-production, with new st uh, CGI, new special effects, um, several cutscenes. In fact, we got so carried away that we filmed almost a whole episode. I mean, it was like, <laughs> I have to tell you, there's just something about this business. You know, we, we, do you remember when you were a little kid and you, you do your first little drawing, you know, and it's like, you can't want to show everybody, hey, mom, look what I did. You know, and we're, all, we're always like that. We forget that the greatest joy in the whole world is creating something that comes from your heart and then sharing it. So for me, Battlestar is one of those things. I got into developing the trailer and we got so many wonderful people coming on board to help us. I mean, we had Volker Engel call me up. Uh, he won the Academy Award for ID4 to, for doing the special effects, visual effects. He calls me up or emails us and said, uh, hey, we heard you were putting together a trailer. We knew that you were kind of putting it together on the side there and spending your own money. He says, I grew up in Battlestar. The reason I got into special effects was Battlestar. He says, can I help you? So we met with him. <coughs> He looked at what we had shot so far and basically he told us it was a bunch of crap. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a bunch of crap. We filmed this big movie. Of course, what I didn't realize was is that when I filmed all these segments and we had all these incredible locations, that number one, it takes a lot of lights to fill it. And then once you fill it, there's a lot of CGI and special effects stuff that have to go with it. Now, if I want to show this trailer three years from now, you know, I would be perfectly cool. But the trouble is, three years can be too late because right now we're in, we're in uh, a negotiation and we need to put it together faster. So basically what he said is, we need to edit it down to about three minutes, three and a half minutes to an extended trailer form and uh, that way we can get the special effects done for it and we can show hotter special effects. See, the longer that special effects is on the screen, the more complex, the, the longer it, it takes to do and the more uh, costly and expensive. So finally we got the point he actually uh, helped us to go back and shoot another day so that we could do some more dramatic shots to throw into a trailer, which is a little different than a you know, full-length movie. So we also had Dean Cundy, who was the DP for Apollo 13, Jurassic Park. He came on board and brought his camera, his 35mm camera, plus about 2,000 feet of 
35 millimeter film and uh, plus some lights and stuff. And then we got this whole entire airport thrown in where we could go shoot in the hangar and out on the tarmac where we could do all these wonderful CGI special effects shots. So we've really gotten a lot of help, but still the processing of the film, the lights, the insurance, I have no idea. The food, people eat, they, they just eat. You know, the less you pay, I'm not paying them a salary until they look at their own damn food. You know, it's like, there's something about this business that, that you just want to eat junk, you know? You want to just keep eating it. It's like, and everybody has their own form of drugs, you know? It's like, it's like M&M's for one person, and red vines for another person, and Snickers, and, and no matter what we got, somebody was pissed off because we didn't get their favorite fat food. So it just went on and on and on, and by the time we added up all the money I spent just on food and lunch and stuff, I mean, it was a fortune. Sophie, you remember Sophie? Sophie, uh, Sophie Stendhaler, she also co-wrote it with me. Uh, she is one of the few writers that's allowed to pitch. Oh, yeah. And he's very notorious for ripping people's stuff off. And most of the time, they don't pay you. But she is one of the few people. And give her a big hand that got paid. <laughs>
my friend over there, you know, uh, wanted to ask her to dance, up to dance. <laughs> Tell her something for me? She says, what? Did you tell her to? <laughs> <laughs> There's something, I mean, honestly, it is, I just don't think people realize sometimes what actors and people go through. I mean, I actually went through, this is the last of these stories, but this is a sad little story, but I was sitting there, and, you know, when you're on a show and you're really, really hot, and everything's exciting, it, it, it's like you get so much love, so much attention, and, and, and it, it, there's so many extremes because people are unrealistic in the way they treat you. And unfortunately, when you get so much love and so much attention, it's almost like a child who gets all that attention from their parents and then the second child comes along and all the attention goes to the baby, right? And the little child feels abandoned. That's what happens to actors. And I know it's hard for fans to feel sorry because they go, well, look, you still, you know, known. people still think you're famous, people still give you attention. But imagine getting so much attention and then pulling back 50% of that. Or 60%. It's like abandonment. It feels like rejection. It's very, very painful for actors to deal with. And it takes a very strong personality to be able to deal with the extreme ups and the extreme downs that you get in this business. So most people don't understand the business is not all glamour and it's not all shiny lights. There's a lot of frustration, a lot of heartache, a lot of struggle, and a lot of heroics. I mean, it takes a tremendous amount of courage, I think, to be in this business. And it takes a lot of courage to go out there and do things that you never dreamt were possible. Some of those people that put movies together, I now am the most forgiving person in the whole world. After filming my trailer, I now am passionately compassionate about producers, writers, directors, production people, all those people that I used to judge harshly as being unartistic. You know, those other people. I think we have time for a few more questions, don't we? How long are we up here?